turning back on. Um, good morning, good morning. So today we are doing part three of our video series. So today we're going to get into being tactical um, and then do kind of a recap. So this will be good for um, Steve since I don't I know you've taken a couple of these classes, but be a good recap for you just to see what we've talked about. These are recorded, so you could go back and watch uh, part one and part two um, if you would want to invest that time to do that. So uh, let me go ahead and do a share screen with you guys and get my PowerPoint up here. All right. So today, part four, section four. So we're gonna go through section four and five, and then we have a recap. Oops, I don't need to do that. I'm trying to move you guys. All right, well, this is starting out good today. <laughs> Having technical issues already. All right, here we go. So best, best practices, um, tips and tricks. And you know, one of the things I've said to you guys and throughout all of the classes is we really don't want to have stumbling blocks, right? We don't want to have, you know, things to say, well, I can't afford to go buy, you know, expensive video equipment, right? Steve is a great example. If you guys aren't friends with him on Facebook, go friend him and check out his videos he does um, because he doesn't, he just does the videos, right? He just gets out of his own way and does it and they're wonderful and he's very warm and inviting and it works, right? It gets people to come to his open houses and, you know, he does, that's a, a very strong pillar in his business is open houses. And so um, go check out what he does. And Monique's also pretty good and so is Rose. Um, so we've got some good examples of people doing um, video out there uh, on social media. And so is Kyle Clayton. His, his uh, kitchen videos are great uh, as well. So kind of finding your niche, right? And finding your voice when it comes to video. All right, so section four. So we want to be clear and concise, but also intriguing, right? Think about, and we're, we're talking about this too in the classes, find someone that you like to listen to and follow them. And it doesn't have to be someone in real estate, it could be whoever, right? Find somebody, a character that you engage with and you like their content and then, you know, uh, Try to try to mirror what they're doing, right? Try to copy what they're doing, um, not copyright, but copy as in you know follow their same uh, style, if you will. So you want to encourage your audience to continue the conversation. You guys have heard me say this is everything we put out, whether that's print, video, whatever, messaging, uh, text, phone calls, everything that we do. We want to make sure we have a strong call to action. What is the what do we want that person to do as a result of receiving this information from me? Okay, um, so adjust the video length. So uh, personal messages here. So if you're sending a text, you got between sixty and ninety seconds. Um, so keep it short and sweet. Otherwise, it won't go through. It'll be too big of a file. Um, Facebook they're recommending two minutes, um, and then Twitter is thirty seconds. Instagram is sixty seconds, and then video YouTube now. This this con I think this material is a little inaccurate because a video on YouTube you can actually go up to like 15 minutes. If you're delivering a video that's like, you know, which side of the street should you buy a house in Phoenix? Okay, why is that relevant? Well, because you probably don't want to have an eastern facing backyard or a western, maybe not eastern so much as western, right? I lived in a house that had western. It was brutal, brutal in the summertime. I never went outside, right? Because it was just so ridiculously hot. Stop. So trash guy went by. My little dog, she's like the town crier at every noise. So uh, so uh, that information, I think, depending on what the content is you're pushing out, YouTube, you do have some more, a little bit more grace and to put those longer videos out there, especially if it's an educational video. So again, which side of the street to live on, you know, that's that's a video you could talk for 10, 15 or 10, you know, 10, 12, 15 minutes, right? Talking about that. You could also cut it down, right? It could be shorter. So depending on the type of content and there's a whole, I'm not going to go down a rabbit hole because YouTube's its own thing, you guys, it's a its own, its own type of uh, prospecting. And there are people that are killing it out there doing YouTube. So um, I have a, a former coaching client of mine. Her name is Katie Day. She's out of Texas. Um, you can look her up on YouTube. I would encourage you to follow her. Um, she's crushing it with the YouTube um, prospecting. And they're specifically looking for buyers, right? People moving into the area. Um, and so, you know, if I'm Googling, if I'm, if I'm, she's in the Houston market. So if I'm thinking about moving to Houston, I jump on YouTube because I want to learn about Houston, right? So same thing here in Phoenix. I'm going to move to Phoenix. What do I need to know about living in Phoenix? And so you can use YouTube to build that following up. But there's a whole, you know, you have to be consistent with it. There's a whole methodology to it. So go find some of those people and follow them um, if that's going to be your bag, right? If you want to use YouTube for, for lead gen. Um, so open your video with a hook. We talked about this last week, right? You've got that 10 seconds. And I think it's even less. What did they say that Gen Z's or Gen X, not Gen, no, Gen Z. I get them so confused. Oh, <laughs> uh, so they have you have like a seven second attention span. 
which is crazy, right? That's like, it's just wild, right? My generation's like 30 seconds. And so just thinking about how fast that is coming at them. So you have that first 10 seconds to capture their attention. So you have to have a strong hook. Um, so the best days and times. And so Facebook, anytime at 11 a.m. or any day at 11 a.m. Um, and as you build, if you're looking at your personal business pages on Facebook, after you start doing enough content, um, it will start to tell you when's the suggested times to do that, so to do your posts, but you have to have consistent content. And, and we have to have business pages, but that's most likely not where you're going to get your most interaction, unfortunately. I mean, unless you're going to be Coca-Cola. I mean, we our, our business page is just now starting to get some, some traction and we've had that page for 10 years. And so it takes time to build that up. It takes time to get the followers. So you, you've you got to have the business page because that's the Facebook rules, but use your personal pages because that's where you're going to get the most interaction. That's where your people are, right? So any day at 11 a.m., Instagram, this is saying Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. and Tuesday at 2 p.m. Um, I'm not in, I am not on Instagram. So again, if you guys are, are on Instagram and you're active on there, pay attention to your own rhythms on there when your people are on there, right? When are they most engaged with you? Um, Twitter, Fridays uh, between 7 and 9, 9 a.m. Um, I think Twitter, you could probably do Twitter at any time, right? Because it's, you know, Twitter is more of that news outlet, right? Where you're getting fast information. And it used to be uh, a very male-dominated uh, audience, um, just because again, men want to get their get their news outlet real quickly, right? Get the bullet points. And so I don't know that that's still true, um, but that's you know, Twitter is again, you know, you have very short. You can only do so many characters on there, and this this is suggesting between seven and nine a.m. LinkedIn Wednesday at three p.m., Thursday between ten nine and ten, and Friday between eleven and twelve. Um, so these are just suggestions based on um, you know what are what are What's the research that's been done? Um, they do change, right? And again, your stuff changes too based on the consistency that you're putting out there. Um, so this is saying that the average uh, attention span for a video consumption is roughly 60 seconds. So we wanna be really, you know, use that time wisely. And if you've ever done a video and recorded yourself, 60 seconds on paper doesn't look like it's a long time, but once you hit go, it feels like forever. <laughs> <laughs> so just keep that in mind. You might think 60 seconds. What am I going to say in 60 seconds? But a lot can be said. Think about Super Bowl commercials. You know, they, the companies pay millions of dollars uh, to have a 30 second spot. And some of them will only have a 15 second spot. And so what, but they get the message across, right? So a lot can be said in 60 seconds. Um, so continuing on here, so we want to make it easy, so easy and possible for your viewers to engage further, right? Um, so we want to anticipate objections, okay? Um, help the help the audience overcome any roadblocks by giving the easy to understand and follow instructions, right? Um, we want to be, be able to convert the audience into advocates for your brands and give them sp uh, specific directives. So again, what do I want them to do as a result of this? Um, and then we want to review our scripts and practices. So kind of like having a conversation. Right, the camera's on, but I'm just having a conversation with you. And if it helps, put a picture of someone up behind you so you actually look like you're talking to someone, uh, you know, that that you would be comfortable talking with, right? And then that way it gives you good eye contact with them with the picture as well. <clears throat> we want to review the concept or the idea. And so we want to practice, right? Basically just practice the script um, and then adapt it to different audiences when necessary. Um, and I will tell you though. Practice is one thing that helps with nerves. And I know that from my own experience, the more prepared I am before I go on stage, the less my nerves are, especially if I'm in a, I'm not necessarily nervous here with you guys on video, but when I'm on a live stage, it's a little bit different, right? And so um, I'm, in, I'm interacting with people a little bit differently and I still I still get nerves, right? And then the bigger the audience too, the, the, the worse the nerves can get. But the more prepared you are, that helps to curve those ner those nerves. Now, I will also tell you that you can practice the hell out of a script and as soon as the camera comes on, everything goes out of your head. <laughs> so I've heard that from agents, right? I practice and practice. I had it, thought I had it memorized and then I totally watched it once the camera came on. That's okay, right? It's okay. It's gonna be messy in the beginning, but that's okay, right? We wanna, we, we, it, nothing's ever perfect the first time we do it. So you just wanna keep moving through that. And you know, I know Facebook Live is pretty intimidating, so start out with recording yourself and then just pushing out content that way. And a lot of the stuff we've talked about too in Momentum, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more, is how do I create video content to manage my transactions, you know, either before, as if they're a lead and I'm, you know, incubating that lead. Now they're a buyer, they're in, they, you know, they're under contract or they're, they're in the process of buying. 
And then, you know, seller, same thing. So we can create video content around that to manage the transaction. So, you know, we get a deal under contract. It's, they get a nice welcome video, you know, hey, this is the next steps you can expect to happen. Um, because just because we go through it and we write the contract, they're not going to remember. They're super excited. They, you know, they're talking about it with their family and friends. They're going to remember all those details that's every day at the office for us, but not for them. Okay. So we've talked a lot about that, about how do I create video to help manage my transaction? So you have that, and then you have, you know, marketing exposure, right? Lead gen. So video can be used for multitude of different ways to uh, support your business. So don't overlook how, don't overthink how you look, right? Some of us say, well, I gotta, I heard someone say, once I get my hair done, I'll, I'll do some video. <laughs> so, uh, right after I lose 20 pounds. So my problem, I don't like the sound of my voice. I can't change that. And so, uh, I mean, I suppose I could maybe do something different, but uh, you get what I'm saying, right? So show up, right? They're not there to, you know, pick apart what, what you look like, right? They're, they're, they are there to hear what you have to say. And, you know, years ago, I, I was in a situation where I had to, I had to have a lawyer to had to go to a court situation. And I remember my lawyer telling me like, don't be nervous. Everyone in here is thinking the same thing you're thinking and they're not paying attention to you because they're all in their own head, right? And that was such, such great advice because if you're in a room with people and you're, you're like, oh my God, what are these people gonna judge me? I'm in a room with an attorney, right? In a courtroom. <laughs> so you get really in your head about what, what other people are thinking about you. And the attorney was brilliant saying, don't worry because they're, they're in their own head, right? So the same kind of thing here with video is that if you show up, how many of those people that would be terrified to do video are now looking at you and they're inspired by you? right? They, they can see that, wow, Heather's really showing up and cares about her business and cares about me, right? Uh, so don't over, don't overthink how you look. So start with, start and end with a smile. We've all experienced somebody that on the phone that you could tell that they like their job, right? And they're smiling as they're doing their job. We've also experienced those people that you can tell that they don't like their job. Um, I had a great experience at the QT on uh, 83rd and Thunderbird last week. I stopped in there to get a bottle of water and the girl that was working the counter was so freaking just cute and friendly and outgoing. And, you know, thank you. Have a great day. We'll see you again soon. And I mean, it was just like, I was observing her because I was a couple people ahead of me and I was observing her doing her job. And I'm like, wow, that's really refreshing, you know, to have somebody in a QT that's just bubbly and friendly and, you know, really liking her job. Or at least she looked like she liked her job. <laughs> so if she doesn't, she was, she was, uh, she was playing it up real good. So we want to smile, right? Smile, be warm and friendly, um, disarm the audience, right? Humanize yourself and inject personality by sharing a genuine and caring disposition practice your uh self-awareness so what's your body language am i open right or, or am i closed off and people are going to feel that from me um you know you can see when people when you're in meetings and people cross their arms like this that's usually a sign that they're shutting down right that they're they're guarding themselves um there's a whole you guys could geek out about that too about body language and uh eye movement eye movement and all kinds of things that tell you about what people are thinking um so lighting you want to make sure you have the right light um eliminate shadows uh around your face you guys can get those little ring lights um you know i have a i have a lamp here plus my overhead so making sure you have good lighting and then background uh choose your space so it's comfortable and positive um someone had told me that people who blur their video uh that they have that they can't be trusted. I was like, oh, I blur mine all the time only because I have hideous uh, filing cabinets behind me that I don't want y'all to judge me for. Uh, <laughs> so plus I like having the Remax balloon when I'm doing Remax classes. So uh, so uh, find the right background that's good for you. Katie had shared with me um, her very first video that she did that still gets some of the best traction. She literally has like a white wall behind her and there's the lighting's terrible. And she, she, she jokes because, and she uses that as an example of just doing it. And it didn't really matter because the content is so good that people still continue to watch that video, even though, you know, she's gone on to produce much better quality uh, videos. Okay. Want to eliminate distractions. And so avoid flashy clothing or jewelry. Uh, so yeah, when I, I, years ago, I took a class for, um, how to be an instructor. And they talked about that, like loud jewelry, anything that's distracting from you can distract the student. It's the same thing here, distract the person from your audience, um, getting the message, right? So we want to make sure that we're, we're good with that. And you guys, we have, you have the offices you could go into and, you know, use, use the, uh, there's, um, there's a green screen set up in one of the offices that you guys could use. And then plus we have the conference rooms that all are nicely branded with Remax and that kind of thing. So, and you could do some research and find out like what's the best backgrounds, um, to do, but don't, don't get overly caught up in that either. I would caution you. Okay. Um, because that could be a stumbling block that we all go, well, I'm not ready. I got to set up my studio. Right. And so don't, don't get caught up in that. Okay. 
Um, all right, so observe your favorite speakers. I mentioned this earlier. So find somebody that, that is very engaging that you like and take notes. It could be, and again, doesn't have to be someone in real estate. It could be, you know, a TED Talk, an actor, an interviewer, a comedian, um, you know, any anybody that, that you resonate with. And then what qualities do you like about them? As an instructor, it's hard for me when I take classes because I can be very critical <laughs> of other instructors, right? And find things that I don't like about their presentation. And so same thing here is what will we do differently? Right. What do I like? But what, what would I do different? Okay. Um, so then, so let's just talk about that. Who's got, you guys got any ideas of who pops in your head as someone who might be your favorite or your least favorite speakers? I will tell you one thing that bugs me on Facebook live when I see people jump on it is they don't know they're live and they're like fixing their face or they're doing weird stuff. They're checking their teeth. And I'm like, dude, we can see you. <laughs> So that always bugs me. It's like, don't you know you're live? Because I'm pretty sure it has a countdown that tells you when it's live. So you guys got any uh, any pet peeves that stand out to you? Y'all are all quiet this morning. All right, well, nobody's got anything. Okay, so that's your challenge though. It's Jan, go ahead. I was just gonna say just people eating in the in the camera you know and yet that's so easy for me to do too because you know it's early morning you you know I want to bring something in here and just sit on camera and eat but you know I've watched other people do it and I don't like it so I don't know that's just one of the things that I don't like yeah and then in a zoom meeting someone eating <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm probably not a big fan of that either. So, um, yeah, but yeah. Okay. So you guys just go and check out, you know, who it is, who is it? And there's plenty of video out there. So, you know, Facebook's got, you got a video button on your Facebook that you can go watch all kinds of things, um, from different interviewers and different people and see, see what stands out to you. Um, all right, so getting tactical. So continuing on here. So we want to create a pre-recording ritual. So we talk about this in momentum, right? Having our affirmations, having our setting ourselves up for success. And so what are you passionate about? What makes you happy? Right. Well, um, can you talk about that for 30 seconds? Um, you know, and, and I guess I've shared this with you guys before that I did Toastmasters way back in the day and we had to do our first speech, right? It was your icebreaker speech. And so you had to get up and talk about yourself. And you think that that's not going to be that hard, but it actually is pretty challenging <laughs> to get up and talk about yourself. So, but is there something that you're very passionate about? I got to see Roberta last Saturday in a, in a completely different um, elements that I've ever seen her before. And I had this just Kool-Aid smile on my face because I'm watching this person that I've known for 20 years and just in a completely different element and how she was speaking in her body language. And she was incredibly passionate about the topic that she was talking about. And it was really cool to see her in that, that element, right? And so what are you passionate about? And can you talk about that for 30 seconds? And here's the thing. Does it need to be about real estate right at this moment? No, just to get you comfortable, right? Talk about something that you're passionate about. Don't be one dimensional where all that's all we do is talk about real estate, right? So what's your joy and your excitement? So can we deliver that content? And then we want to recite the purpose. Okay, so what's the goal? Again, what's the CTA, the call to, the call to action? Um, and then who are we speaking to? So who's our audience? If our, is our Facebook people? Is it our Instagram people? Um, who is it that we're speaking to? And then remind yourself that you want to be the, sub the subject matter expert. Um, there's a lot of stuff going around on social media about you know the market, right? And we can either be influenced by what's happening and what we see, or we can be the influence. Does that make sense? And so I was talking to an agent yesterday. She wrote an offer on this listing I took in surprise and she was talking about the market and how hard it's been. And, you know, but the buyers, you know, the, she just had, she, she had a really interesting view on things and and you know I looked her up she's been in the business like six years and it's like okay so she's in that window of of three quarters of the agents have never experienced a different market and so um you know so I kind of did a little coaching with her right about it's okay to be a balanced market it's okay for homes to sit a little bit right um that's okay it's not the end of the world and so we want to make sure that we are being the influence you guys be louder than the sensationalized headlines be louder than the people that are out there being the naysayers okay interest rates are brutal and they're almost seven percent today they are brutal um, but you know having i was very upfront with my sellers before we put the house in the market don't be surprised if you get an offer that's asking for concessions that's the market we're in and guess what 
you got an offer that's asking for concessions. And it wasn't mind blowing to them. And I didn't tip them over the scales because I had already prepared them that there was a high probability that you were going to get an offer asking for this, especially when they're competing with new construction that's offering 6% incentive. Right, Lancy out in Surprise and Desert Oasis, 6%, you guys, that they're offering incentives. And they've got, they have inventory that you can move into with by October. Um, so if you haven't been out there, Desert Oasis and also across uh, Grand in North Copper Canyon, um, they've got product over there as well. So, and you know, 6%, and they're, they're reasonable reasonably priced for new construction. Um, so be the expert, right? And we want to be passionate about that because that passion will come through to your audience. Okay. All right. So connect with the call to action. I think I've talked a lot about this already. So you guys understand that, you know, we don't want to be salesy, but we definitely do want to have something that we want them to do uh, as a result of receiving this information. All right. So call to, so here's some examples. And this is, um, if you if you haven't got the class materials from me either from this session the, this city this video series or previously, will you put it in the chat so I can make sure you get it because I want you guys to have these call to uh, call to action examples. So I'm not going to read all of them to you, but here are some examples, right? So tag me the next time, right? Tag a friend, click below, um, comment on something, right? And as you're doing, you know, Steve, when you know you're doing your Facebook lives, you know, what do you guys think about these granite countertops? You know, what do you think about this? You know, this view, and that gets that engagement where people will start believing. Their heart things or you know they'll pop something in the chat right um and you know it's good on live to see the views that you're getting while on live but then you have the views after because i don't ever probably catch steve when he's actually live but it's the replay that shows up in my news feed that i catch right and so people can still comment and still hearts and, and be engaged in that right so the, here's some great examples you guys don't have to invent the wheel go use go use what's right here uh for you okay um, so connect with and continuing on with this. So do the most the most important elements of the call to action is what you do, right? So we get the engagement and they they all put comments and get and get you know comment or you know do what you want them to do. What do I do with that now? Right. So we want to follow up with it. Right. So we want to have that save the details somewhere. Um, if, if, if it's something, a, a detail about a person that needs to go into your CRM, then we need to know about them. Right. Like an important date or a dog's name or whatever. Right. Put that stuff into a place where you can save it. Um, we want to be proactive. We want to continue that engagement. Um, I shared with you guys last week that I lost a buyer deal and it was totally my fault for not following up. Somebody in my sphere and, uh, posted on Facebook, a picture of him, it's a great day or something about the weather. And oh, by the way, I bought a house. And I immediately followed up with him, one, with the congratulation, but two, like, I, how did I drop the ball? And I dropped the ball, right? Because I didn't follow up with him. I did not stay engaged with him, okay? And especially because his conversation, our conversation had to do with him paying off credit cards and, and saving money. And he had posted a couple of months ago that he had paid his credit cards off. And I liked the post. I remember the post, but I did not do anything with it after that. And that's my bad, right? That's totally my fault. I should have followed up and said, Heather, <laughs> I saw you paid your credit cards off. What's our next step, right? So, so I share that because you, you know we can drop the ball on those little things. And so we've got to pay attention to those things on social media, right? So follow up, put it in your CRM. I should have put something in my CRM to tag me to say, hey, follow up with them. Or at least a note in my phone to say, hey, you know, call him, right? Uh, so then we want to continue the conversation so we can build rapport with your audience that makes a lasting impression and then reinforces your brand. I challenged uh, Heather yesterday and her whole team to do a post every day for 30 days with a strong call to action on social media, right? And Jan, you're smiling because you you did that challenge. Um, and it, you know, it was not easy, right? I mean, it was not easy, but it, it gets results, right? It gets that buzz going. It's people talking, okay? So a great place There's to start. Different calls to action. Say what? For 30 days, that's a lot. You know, hey, you want to buy a house? Hey, you want to buy a house? Hey, you want to buy a house? That's got to be a lot. <laughs> it doesn't, but that wouldn't be the messaging at all. So what I would do is I would take, go gather a bunch of intel, right? You have, you have uh, PhotoFi has a great, great content, um, you know, that Remax collaborative share page. Um, and then, you know, just anybody who posts stuff out, you know, do some funny stuff. You guys saw the meme of the, the two girls fighting and then the Karen that's like, I got this. She lived through the, she's drinking the martini. She's the agent who lived through the crash. I got a ton of engagement right. from that post, right? Um, and so you could create, create other things. You, you know, Roberta, if you got a listing, put it out, right? That's a post. If you had a price improvement, that's the new buzzword, not price reduction, price improvement, push that out, right? Grab one of those that's, you know, which bathroom would be your vibe, right? So you can have fun with different content. Um, uh -oh. Everything, 
I got it. Mix it up. It's not just all going to be buy a house, buy a house, sell a house, sell a house, right? We want to talk about you and your value and what you bring to the table. And what am I doing as a realtor? Right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, because if you think about the home and you think about real estate, there's a whole lot that gets incorporated in that. All right. There's a whole lot. And it's not just about buying and selling. So you guys could mix it up. Okay. Same thing I intend on doing with the Lancy stuff. Um, I'm going to go grab a picture of one of the models and put it out and say, Hey, this, this is available spec inventory. You could move in before Christmas and they're giving 6% um, incentive. Right. So uh, at the very least, if that doesn't get me any engagement, it still puts me top of mind with people and saying, Oh, Sarah's my go-to, right. I should reach out to Sarah about real estate. Okay. I got a listing yesterday from that for it. She said that I kept reminding her on Facebook that I was doing real estate. So it worked and it wasn't comfortable doing it for 30 days. I didn't do call to action too much every now and then I'd be like, call me if you need help or, you know, I just do something like that. But I did actually that helped me get that listing. So there you go. I love it. Yeah. So, and also hashtags could be a, an easy way to leave those imp those impressions as well. I had done a, a post not that long ago and it said hashtag was who you work with matters. All right. So there's little things like that that you guys could come up with and, you know, use Remax or, you know, all those little subliminal things that we could put out there um, that, that are also those call to actions. Okay. So here's some examples in your materials of what we could be doing, right? So and I'm not going to read everything to you on here, but obviously tips around buying and selling, um, staging, uh, gardening tips, right? Fun facts, um, how to's. Um, so some DIY type things. Um, and then, you know, should I paint my cabinets or should I replace them? Like what, what does that look like? What's the newest trends and things? Um, I love when, um, they come out with the color of the year, uh, cause that's just a fun thing to push out and, and seeing what they come up with, right? How do they come up with these colors? And so, um, and you know, I, I actually have pushed that out in my, cause I like to do at the end of the year, I like to do like a Remember you used to get those letters in your holiday cards where people actually wrote about their lives before social media. Uh, so I kind of do something like that too for my top 50 and I'll, if it's available, I'll put the Pantone color of the year in there, right? So just having some fun with that. What do, what do they need from you? Okay. Vendors, right? Having good vendors. Um, I have this Remax lead, pretty cool. It's a Remax.com lead. It's a listing in Arrowhead Ranch and these guys need, they need a trash out. They need a roofer. They needed a sewer scope. Uh, we did a home inspection and I was talking to the one brother last night He's like, you have been so amazing. Thank you so much for helping with all of this. We're, they live in Utah, right? It's a house that they inherited. And so having good vendors, right? That we can rec make those recommendations to people because they just went in the yellow pages basically and have gotten some crazy pricing on the roof. And so um, having good vendors that we can refer out that will help people, okay? What you've learned as a realtor. There was a funny meme going around about everything I learned in school about the stupid uh, square footage of, a, of, of an acre, right? That that's the only thing I learned in real estate school was how big the square footage of an acre was, right? And so we can have fun with silly things like that. It could also not, it could, you know, we, you guys saw the video of the lady that um, fell. This was circulating around during COVID when we had the lockdown. She, I think she was from Indiana or somewhere in that Midwestern area. She fell during a showing and she, she jumped on her phone and started telling everybody about how she fell. And, you know, she hoped her client didn't see her bloomers and I she was crying laughing telling the story which made me laugh hysterically crying and so that's the non-glamorous part about real estate right is having something and, it, and if you show enough houses something stupid's gonna happen to you I promise you I've only ever fallen once knock on wood and it was so embarrassing and super painful it took me two years to recover from that so my ankle still hurts every once in a while so you can have those non-glamorous things too I fell in a pool oh geez Roberta <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one that's a yeah. good one so see if you had had social media at that time that would be a great post to put on social media right the non-glamorous things you guys saw my mannequin posts which when I talked to that guy yet we were talking yesterday I said I gotta be honest with you the, the, the mannequin in the master bedroom really freaked me out and he goes oh yeah that was in the closet we pulled it out because we thought it'd be funny and I was like oh yeah well, well good job because it scared the crap out of me <laughs> So, so things like that, right? That's not glamorous, but it, it really happens. Okay. And it got a ton of engagement because I posted on there, what creepy things have you guys seen in houses? And a bunch of people commented and there was a lot of really, really funny stuff that got shared. Okay. So um, things you wish you had known, right? So like before painting or before doing whatever, you know, different types of flooring, different hardwares, whatever. Okay. So those are all great things. So um, your phone right? Your simple phone. The phones have come so far from the days of flip phones back, you know, when Sprint had the 10 cents a minute cheap 
flip phone, right? That we all thought was great. <laughs> I'm really aging myself right now. Uh, but your phones, right? Especially if you have the iPhone, the cameras on those are amazing. Um, some of them are better than the cameras you could buy in the store. And so use your phone, right? Um, and if you want to get some kind of a device to hold out there, great. You know, there's teleprompters out there that you can get that are apps. And you know, there's all kinds of things you can add to. But for right now, just use your phone, right? Just get comfortable using your phone. Uh, messaging around. So uh, PhotoFi. Do we have that? Okay, if you guys, it's it's four, like four bucks a month, $56 for the year. I think you get your first 90 days for free. Um, lots of great content that's easy to push out. BombBomb Bomb is another Remax approved supplier. This is a, a video CRM, basically. And so you guys, when you get the what's happening email from Nate every Friday or Saturday, whichever day it comes out, that's BombBomb. Bomb. Cool thing about BombBomb Bomb is you can go in and, and house a bunch of videos. So like if you wanted to do a birthday a birthday video that you sent out every year to your database, you could do that, set it and forget it. Um, you can do like the Remax um those monthly updates that they do, that that stuff can be set in there as well. Um, so and, and there's a cost, I think it's like 500 bucks a year, but don't go out and get it unless you're actually going to commit to doing video. This would also be a place that you would store uh, your videos like what's going to happen next, you're under contract, what happens next. So this would be a good place to house that type of video as well. Okay, so and then again, those can be, those are evergreen, right? You set it, it's done. And now it's your video that you use for the next couple of years until you decide that I've gotten older and I should, re <laughs> I should record these again because it doesn't look like me anymore. Um, so that's bomb bomb. And then big view again, that's the teleprompter. And then Vimeo is similar to YouTube. Um, and again, I think YouTube for what we're doing, um, Vimeo would be more for like, what would it be for? How do I describe this? I think more like, I don't know. It diff it's just a different platform. I think for what you guys want, because of the lead gen piece of it, I think YouTube is the more superior choice for you if you're using it for, for lead gen. Okay. Um, Vimeo, I guess you could probably store your videos like your, you know, what happens next, that type of thing. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Vimeo. Uh, I think YouTube is the better choice. Um, all right, so section five, so establishing our system. So track, right? We talk a lot about this in momentum, right? We want to track it. Um, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So we want to make sure what's hitting, right? What's what's connecting with people? Do I need to change my do I need to change my messaging? Okay. Um, do I need to change the time of the day that I'm posting things, right? Or the length of it. So we want to record the the results, right? How many interactions did I get? Did I get new followers? Did I get shares? comments, all that stuff. Okay. And then we want to evaluate that and be honest. Um, you know, and if you guys, if you, if you want to practice, send your videos to some people that you trust to give you honest feedback. Um, you guys are all going to be in, I think all of you signed up. So you're all going to be in pods here pretty quickly. So establish a close relationship with someone in your pod and have them give you honest feedback. Okay. And, and don't just say it's great, right? Uh, we used to use a, an Oreo thing, an Oreo concept in Toastmasters. So you'd start out with a positive, then the critique, and then the positive. And so, you know, be, be honest with people if it needs to, you know, start out, it was great, this was good, but here's we need to make the, the change and then finish with a positive. Um, and we wanna just constantly be improving ourselves, right? So expanding our knowledge, enhancing our skill and our confidence um, inside the journal that you guys are gonna get, which by the way, Kim sent out an email today. They are available at Arrowhead North. So go pick up your copy. I think we're shy a couple copies. So um, first come first serve right now until I can get my hands on some more. Uh, so in there is the three, two, one concept, right? Which is making contact with three people adding two new people and learning one new thing. So this kind of ties to the slide, right? Continue to expand our knowledge. So according to a Harvard study, individuals who have an accountability partner saw a 33% increase in their productivity. So how timely is that, that we're rolling out our new accountability program? So again, we wanna be honest, right? And then um, I guess we'll figure out once we have our first meetings, I think we're doing it every Monday. And then I think that's going to depend on you guys and, and how much more you want to do with your pods. Okay. Um, so we want to you know, work with those people, right. And be honest with each other. Uh, all right. So our last section here is putting it all together. So we talked about in the first class was our listing conversion. So our core beliefs. And if you take them, if you take more than one momentum class, you will see that the core beliefs are, are in many of the classes because they're super important. So what I would suggest that you do is print this page out, all right, and have it at your station, wherever your workstation is. And before you start your day, whether that's picking up the phone to prospect, 
starting a video, uh, read through these, right? Have, have these be your core beliefs. I used to have my affirmations laminated and hanging in the shower. So it forced me every morning to read them, right? And so I don't do that anymore. Uh, maybe I should go back to it because yeah, I might. Uh, so having those core beliefs, right? So that we review them every day before you, before you get into your day, because these are the core beliefs we need to have part of our DNA if we want to be successful as a realtor. And some of them, I think, as a human being, because number two is one of my personal mantras is I live in a world of abundance. And that just doesn't apply to my real estate business that applies to my life in general, right? Um, and so reading through these, uh, we'll, we will talk more about them as we move through the, the additional momentum classes. So same thing here, buyer conversion, right? Um, this one is number one, uh, is that I live in a world of abundance, okay? Um, all right, so I know this is kind of tiny to read, but lights, camera, action. Here's a video prep checklist. Um, and one of the things that's not on here that it should be is put it in your phone. I know that sounds really simple, but if you have a scheduled to do in your phone, there's a higher probability it's going to get done than if it's just an idea floating around in your head or on a checklist, you know, a paper checklist that I, you know, Roberta says, I'm going to get to that, right? If it's in my phone and it goes off, and I have, and if you're like me, I don't like to clear the reminders because <laughs> then if I clear the reminder, I forget that it's there. So I want that little notification up there because I hate the notifications. They're like a little, you know, thorn in your side, but I want that thorn in my side because it reminds me I need to do it. Okay. So be consistent. That's the other thing about video. Any of the, the big YouTubers will tell you is consistency is important. Your audience is showing up and they are expecting to get that consistency from you, the message from you. Okay. So what are our different social media platforms and understanding the video links of those? Okay. Your story, right? What's your brand? We talked about that last, was it last week or the week before is who are you? What's your brand? What do you want to be known for? What's your tagline? Okay. Um, I think Roberta, if I remember correctly, yours is real people, real results. Am I close? Real people, real dreams. That's it. Real people, real dreams. Yeah. So having your tagline, right? Nate, Nate is one of Arizona's natural resources. And so building your brand around that. Um, have know what know what my content is, right? What's valuable and relevant. Um, have your self-assessment, right? Determine what I might be avoiding, why I might be avoiding video. Roberta, go ahead. Can I go back to that tagline? Yeah. You know, Nate had us do those, many of us, years ago. And you just sort of have a tagline. But we actually use it. And we used it in a client meeting the other day. And the guy was in such distress. And he's like, I just can't believe you're even helping me do, you know, do what I need to have done. And I just need to get this monkey off my back. And he was so sad. We, Rick was with me and he, Rick said, you know, we have a tagline and it's called real people, real dreams. You're a real person. You have a real dream and we're going to be here to help you do that. And it was just so impactful to the guy mm -hmm. to pull out that, you know, it wasn't just a tagline to stick on a piece of collateral. We actually use it when we talk to people. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And that's, I would be hashtagging that too. <clears throat> when you do, do. Goes out. yeah, use it, make sure that goes out. So, cause that's a, that's a, it's very clean, but it's also very true for if you if you interact with Roberta and her team at all, um, it's very true for them that that's who they are and they live that they live that hashtag. Um, okay, so be intentional and proactive about incorporating video messaging into your business. Um, you know, we talked about we're going to talk about business plans coming up here, uh, and then have you practice your scripts, right? Practice, practice, practice. Uh, and then, what are your core listing beliefs and core buyer beliefs? Again, I would print that out and have it at my workstation so I can review it often or put it in your shower. Uh, <laughs> so practice, you know, have that honest self-reflection and self-awareness um, and then identify your aspirations. So what's your goal around video? Obviously, you know, one, it's two part, right? We can manage our transactions with video and we can lead gen with video, right? Um, and then uh, understand what the video, how powerful it can be in communicating your brand, right? Um, it can take you know, a regular post, right? Or even a photo and it puts it on steroids, right? It brings it to life. Okay. And then understanding that video can be powerful uh, to support dollar productive activities and vital activities. And then understand that if you create a solid system uh, for process, it can be successful. Okay. All right. So your system and your schedule. Okay. So again, put it in your schedule. I know that sounds really, really simple, but it is an effective way to make sure that you get it done. So creating the system and the schedule, it becomes a habit, right? Nate will tell you that um, when he started working my perfect week, it wasn't, he didn't start to see success. And we call it the intentional week in our book. He didn't really start to see success until he put it into his, into his phone, into his actual like 
calendar that he has on Google. And, you know, having those colored overlays in there started to be like that nagging voice that, hey, you said you weren't going to go on a listing appointment past six o'clock, right? You said you'd be there for your family to have dinner. And so it starts to be that nagging voice um, that reminds you not to do that, right? So same thing with videos. We want to put it so that it's intentional in our calendar, okay? Um, so the AMS, how many hours in the week do we want to work? So this is your, your time budget. Um, and then define those hours, right, into our vital blocks of lead gen, lead conversion, client care, and then personal development. We want to record those activities, stay engaged for the, the entire block. And I think I've shared this with you guys before. Um, an author named Brandon Burchard wrote a book called um, High Performance Habits, I believe is what it's called. And he talks about, um, scientifically, it's been proven that adults... Uh, after a 45 minute time, they, they can't concentrate anymore. And so it's been proven that if you get up and you take a 10 or 15 minute break, walk around your house, drink some water, watch a funny cat video that actually regenerates your energy levels, right? Or a funny dog video um, <laughs> regenerates your, your energy level. And then you can come back and recommit for another 45 minute block. Okay. Um, because if you sit down and say, I'm going to do three hours of nonstop prospecting, Probably not. It's going to do that. Okay. And plus, it's going to zap your energy. Okay. Um, so stay engaged for the entire block and then record the activities, right? So assess the progress, reflect, revise, and release. And if you need to play the song, let it go from Frozen, if that's part of your, your ritual, um, play it, right? Let it go. And so we don't want to end our any kind of prospecting or even you know, recording video. You want to end it on a high note, right? So because if you if you end it on a low note, let's say you went on Facebook Live and you botched it. Well, the next time Facebook Live shows up in your video, are you going to feel inspired to do that? Maybe not, right? So you always want to end on a high note and then release, right? Let it go. What did I do right? What can I do better? And then I'm going to let it go, okay? And then we want to repeat this process on a daily basis. So time blocking. So content creation. When, where, right? Where, when and where am I going to record? Where am I going to post? Um, and then how am I going to send it? So is it going to be a post? Am I going to send stuff via email or text? Again, bomb bombs via email um, that you can send that stuff out, but you could also use video for text as well. Um, and then time, right? Again, we talked about this. Put this in your calendar. How much time? I think if you're going to do like, the managing your transaction type videos, I would carve out a, a, maybe a half of a day, have some different outfit changes. And then, cause once you get in the flow of it and you're recording, you're, it, it's easier to bang out, you know, a half dozen videos in one session than it is to stop and come back and do more, right? Um, your videos for marketing and, and prospecting, those are probably going to be, you know, one and done type sessions, uh, especially if you're doing a Facebook live. So again, follow up. What was the engagement? Um, a little trick that I've shared with you guys before is if you get a comment, don't comment right away. You can like it or heart it, but wait a little bit, wait an hour or till the end of the day and go back and comment. It refreshes that post in the, the news feed, right? So you can you can trick that a little bit and squeeze the orange, get a little bit more traction out of those posts if you wait, okay? Um, and then we wanna use our CRM to track the information that we learn from the engagement and then evaluate our results and then continue continue on with our next thing. Um, you know, creating the evergreen content. When we think about an evergreen tree, it doesn't lose its leaves in the winter, right? It's green all year round. And so kind of the same thing with video is, will this video be the type of content that, will never go out of style, right? We can talk about relevant stuff right now, like interest rates, but interest rates are going to, they will come down in the future, right? This isn't forever. Um, and so we talk about that evergreen versus what's happening right now, okay? So consistent, consistent focused action equals success habits, right? So above all else, set yourself up for success by setting real, realistic expectations. Give yourself an easy win to start and that builds the foundation of success over time. It creates momentum, right? So celebrate even the smallest little successes and be realistic. You know, you know it might not be realistic, Jan, to say, I'm going to go next week. I'm going to do Facebook Live every day. Probably not going to happen, right? Probably not. But could you start with recording a happy birthday message and texting it to one of your friends to get comfortable, you could do that, right? You could do that. So start with something simple that's going to give you a win that then creates that momentum that says, hey, I can do more, right? I, I got this, okay? Tools. So inside of your guys' uh, materials, you've got the trackers here. So this gives you um, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and email. Um, so you guys can print these out and use these or turn them into a Google, a Google Doc. Um, I think anytime we can do it more digital, the better. Uh, and so we want to track our, again, talk, tracking about our um, vital activities here. Okay, so when, where, what am I posting, right? When am I doing it? 
And am I following up, right? So, uh, and then continuing the message. Um, you're out your evaluation checklist, okay? So going through and evaluating yourself on a regular basis, okay? This is not always fun um, <laughs> to be honest with ourselves. It's a high level of accountability, but the only love, the only way to improve is to be honest with ourselves and to track to track what we're doing. Um, the most motivated self-starting person in the world will fail at, at the result if they're not clear about what the expectation is. And so, you know, being honest with yourself here in this evaluation. Um, another tracker for you guys. So my social media engagement tracking sheet. Really basic stuff here, okay? So again, you could turn this into a spreadsheet if you wanted to. What did I post? <laughs> uh, what was my audience? What was the content? And then what was what was the reaction, right? What did I get um, as a result of that? All right, and lastly here, the goal of training is action, right? Uh, I'm gonna minimize you guys here so I can read this whole quote. So when you are in motion, you are planning and strategizing and learning. Those are all good things, but they don't produce results. Action, on the other hand, is the type of behavior that will deliver an outcome. If you don't want to merely, you don't want to merely be planning, you want to be practicing. And so it doesn't do us any good to listen to me uh, for an hour, almost an hour talk, and then just go out and not take action. So we wanna go out and actually have some results of what we are doing as uh, from having been here, right? Being here with me. Uh, let's see. So Steve and Donna need the materials. Okay. All right. Comments, questions, thoughts. Who's going to go record a video today? <laughs> no, I'm not ready. No. <laughs> Um, no, I do it randomly. I don't do it planned and scheduled. Uh, Janae's on this call and I've said, see the little green room? We need to start doing that. <laughs> but we would like to start doing the, um, the, ones, the process ones so that they're in the can and they're an available out on YouTube and we can push it out to somebody. Um, and let's be serious, whether we're new or whether we're seasoned, agents, we can do that and sound knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sitting here at my desk, just looking at this little piece of paper. I don't know where it came from. I don't know if you can see it. It disappears every now and then. The home buying process, a step-by-step -step guide. Mm -hmm. I could just read this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or even a video is like, what's the most frequently asked questions about buying a home? Yeah. Or myths, myths, myths and truths about being a homeowner. Um, the Gen Zs are, are want to be there. You know, they were studied that there was like eighty some percent of them, maybe six percent of them said they want to own a home before they turn thirty, but they were misinformed about what they need for down payment. They think they need eleven percent for down payment, and we know that that isn't true. You need three and a half percent on FHA, wow. and if they served in the military, they need nothing. Nothing. Right. So Dan, you came off video or off mute. Did you got something? No, I think I just don't want you to think it's falling on deaf ears. Like, you know, I keep coming to the trainings because I believe that someday I'll do this. You know, <laughs> I did. I One day you challenged us. I mean, this was way back when, when I first started to do a video, I went outside and recorded. It was just so bad. It was so bad. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I've got to figure something out if I'm going to do this. And last week I went to a, I don't know, it was this um, training that the title company had and and. And there's a guy on there, um, John Cunningham or something. He does a lot of YouTube videos and he's a realtor here in Phoenix. And, you know, I don't know. I started off thinking, okay, maybe I could do this. And then the more he talked about teleprompters and ring light rings and all the, just all these things. <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh, I just, I don't know if I can do this, but I do think I'll do it someday. I just, I don't know. I just keep trying to pick up more and more information about it. So sure. it, it's not falling on deaf ears, but I just, I don't know. I'm just not real confident. Yeah. That. Don't, don't let that be a stumbling block. You you've sat in another space in your house that has a very lovely, I don't know if it's maybe your dining room and you're at a hutch. Or something. I, so just sit right there. That's a lovely background. You don't need to get caught up with the ring. I mean, you could go on Amazon and buy one. I have one here and it doesn't work very good. So I don't ever use it. So um, I just use my two lights here. I don't, I mean, maybe it's not the right thing to do, but I mean, don't let that be an impediment. Just do it. Okay. Okay. Anyway. And don't get worked up about teleprompters. What he's referring to is there's a program that you stick on your phone and you stick the phone in front of your face and that's the teleprompter. It's not like the fancy ones that are at a TV station. Yeah. So don't stress about that when they say silly things like that. And then, you know, you asked a question earlier, 
and nobody answered, I think. Who, who's the best presenter that you've seen or whatever? You know, we get a broker blast from Broker Shannon all the time. Every Friday. <laughs> and we should watch it. Because you know what? She's amazing. And if you think she's comfortable doing that, you're wrong. But she is amazing. She does such a great job and she's such a great uh, person to watch and to emulate, to articulate like her. And most importantly, she'll goof up every now and then. And then she kind of chuckles at herself and she pulls it back together and she keeps on going. It's not very often, but she does. And what a great role model she is to show us how to do that. And she's just doing it for her job. Now we can go do it for ours and do that weekly blast or whatever and just take her take her tips the way she does it it's pretty amazing mm -hmm. and she, what it what does she have does she have a teleprompter nope does she have fancy camera does she have a script maybe <laughs> at least has talking points i think so she's, she's talking points but she just talks from the heart she just does it yeah right? she was terrified when she first started doing those things she's less terrified now but you're right she's not comfortable right. doing it so right not her gig, but she does it amazingly. Yeah, completely outside. Well, and not to not to poke fun at Nate, but his videos aren't great quality. Oh my gosh, his are hysterical. They're awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, some of them, I'm like, I'm embarrassed for him because I'm like, Nate, really? Like, <laughs> did, are are you looking around at what you're doing right now? Uh, so yeah, I mean, his are. But he his, gets a lot of followers and a lot of people watching. Yeah. Isn't that the point? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and you know, same thing with Steve, you know, go check out his videos cause they're, they're great. So, and Monique does a great job and, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of good examples for us to follow out there. So, yeah, but just commit to something small that you can do today. Um, you know, and we do videos in other parts of our life. In fact, I think, uh, Rose was talking about one of her buyer's agents yesterday. She saw her on TikTok and she was like a completely different person on TikTok. And I was like, well, you need to be that person in your real estate business that you are on your TikTok. So, right. All right. So ch challenge yourselves to go do a post every day for 30 days. Let, let's ramp up the momentum here. Um, and re remember price improved. I love that instead of price reduction, new, new sexy way to say that. Um, and just, you know, look for ways to engage you guys stay present. And, you know, there's 20,000 homes on the market right now. There's a lot, I know the interest rates suck, but you know, there's a lot of sellers out there that are willing to pay concessions and uh, let's, let's sell some houses. Okay. Uh, what Donna, what were you going to say? What's who, what's her name? Are you talking about Roberta? Roberta, what lady were you talking about? Our, Shannon, our broker. Yeah, Shannon, our broker. Oh, Shannon. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, when we do, when we every Friday, when you guys get the what happened, what's happening email that comes from Nate, she has her little yep. broker blast in there, and then I think it could, I think it could push it out on uh, the inner cir inner circle too. So if you miss yep. it there. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. All right. So what do we got Thursday? Thursday is what? What do we have Thursday? Um, I don't know what's on the calendar Thursday. What is today? The 20... 20th. Yeah. What do we have on the calendar Thursday? I should know this. I make the calendar. Pre-listing inspection. Oh, right. Yes. In person. in person. Yeah. So if you're going, um, make sure you RSVP because they're, um, I think Jean, Janine, I think she, or yeah, Jean, Jean, she, yeah. she makes her own food when she, when she, um, sponsors a class she like makes it legit herself and so and it's really delicious she's a great cook so um so make sure you rsvp if you plan on taking that pre-listing inspections you know this is coming back this is something we used to do years ago right is to have the house inspected beforehand and get in get any minor repairs done or at least know that if there was some major repairs but now we need to either take care of it or price it accordingly uh and then you know there's a whole there's a whole process to that so it's going to be a good class to, to check out um and that's I, i'm guessing they're just going to do it in the conference room unless there's a whole bunch of you and then they'll do it in the bullpen area of the uh arrowhead north office so that's that and then next thursday don't forget um or not next Thursday, it's the following Thursday, uh, October 6th, the risk management meeting. So put that on your calendar that's at WeServe. Um, they will be Zooming it, but like I said, you'll, you'll be required to have your camera on and uh, they will be doing pop quizzes. It's kind of like doing a CE class for the Department of Real Estate. So, but if you can come, be there in person. It's a great opportunity to network and meet people and have breakfast and just a, a, good, a good way to engage. So uh, with that being said, if you guys need anything, reach out. Otherwise, I will see you next Tuesday in Momentum classes, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Take care, you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.